So today's topic, solve systems using substitution, substitution and elimination. So normally I would um, solve systems by hand before I would do solving systems on the calc, but I kind of did it in reverse in this unit. Um, the real reason was I wanted to give you a lot of warm-ups that deal with writing systems of equations. So I had to do that first before I showed you how to solve them by hand. So in these cases, if I ask you to solve by substitution or elimination, you have to solve them by hand. Now, if you want to check them using A inverse B or poly sim alt, uh, go for it. I don't mind you checking them, but I've got to be able to see your work that you did it by hand. Um, all the story problem ones, all of those, I just ask you a question at the end and it doesn't demand a certain solving technique. So you can solve them any way that you want. But when I say solve by substitution or solve by elimination, you have to use that method. All right. So this will be pretty much review for you. Um, generally, kids are quite confident in this type of uh, problem if they've gotten this far in math. So we want to solve the system using substitution or elimination. How do you decide which is which? Well, in this case, what do you notice that I've got for Y? Y is already by itself. Y equals this junk. So what I can do is I can take this stuff that is equal to Y and I can substitute it into the other equation for Y. So instead of having 3x subtract 2y equals 4, I'm going to have 3x subtract 2 times the quantity negative 2x plus 5 equals 4. Notice what we did here. We took out the y and we replaced it with something that's equivalent to it, that's equal to it. Now, We've got an equation. Our goal always when we're trying to solve a system is to get down to one equation with one kind of variable. Here, here we had two equations with two different kinds of variables. So you can use, that's a solvable system, but we are going to use one of two methods to try to get to one equation with one kind of variable. Because when we get one equation with one variable, we can use our solving techniques to figure out what the answer is going to be. So. What's the worst part of this equation is the parentheses, so we can get rid of the parentheses by distributing. So 3x, a negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4x. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Now what's the biggest problem? That we have too many x's, so I'm going to combine the x's. Luckily, they're on the same side. I don't have to do anything fancy. 3x plus 4x is 7x. And then from here, we just start solving. Bump over the 10. Divide by the 7, and we get x equals 2. Notice I underlined that. I didn't box it in because the solution to a system is a coordinate pair. It's an x and a y. So now I'm going to take this x value, and I'm going to plug it back in. Now, where do I plug it back in? It doesn't matter. Usually one of them is a little bit nicer than the other, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to plug it into this one because this I'm trying to find y, and y is already solved for. So y equals negative 2 times, we just solved that x was 2. So I'm going to sub that in for x plus 5. This is something that I can calculate. That's negative 4. Negative 4 plus 5 is positive 1. Notice I underlined that. I didn't box it in. Now we're going to take those two answers together, and we're going to write our overall solution as 2 comma 1 we always list these in alphabetical order. In this case, X came before Y. What do you think? Old news, I hope. Here's our other style. Notice that X and Y, neither of one of neither one of them are by themselves. So we're going to try to get. Um, well, you could try to get one of the Y's by themselves and plug and chug from there, or we can do this other move called elimination. So what I'm going to do to eliminate is I'm going to look and see if there's anything that cancels. And so if I look at my X's and my Y's, neither one of those will cancel each other out. So I'm going to pick one of them to try to get rid of. And I'm going to pick the Y because Y is already opposite. The Y values are already opposites of each other. Now, I, the problem is they're not the same number. So I need to turn them into the same number. And I'm going to do that 
by multiplying each equation by something. Now, this is legal as long as you multiply everything in that equation by the same value. So what should I multiply 3 and 4 by? What should I try to turn them into to make them into the same number? Well, the obvious choice is 12. A guaranteed way to make two numbers into the same number is times them by each other. So I'm going to times this one by 4, and I'm going to times this one by 3. Now notice, I didn't want one of them to be negative because they're already set up to be opposites. They're already set up to cancel. So when I multiply this by 4, 5 times 4 is 20 x 3 times 4 is 12 y 9 times 4 is 36 and then I'm going to do the same thing with the 3 2 x times 3 is 6 x negative 4 y times 3 is negative 12 y then 14 times 3 is 42 now I have two variables or sorry I have the y variables ready to cancel so I'm going to add these two equations together. 20x plus 6x is 26x. 12y subtract 12y. 12y plus negative 12y equals 0. And then 36 plus 42 equals 78. Look at what, Remember, our goal is to get one equation with one kind of variable. So right now we have one equation with just x. Who's keeping x? 26 connected by malt, division x equals 3. Notice I underlined, I didn't box in because I still have some work to do. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to plug this x into, I guess this one's slightly better because it doesn't have any negatives, but either way is going to take some work. So 5x, well we know what x is, we said x was 3, plus 3y equals 9. Now I'm going to start to clean that up. 5 times 3 is 15. Who's farthest away from y on the same side is 15, so I'm going to subtract. Divide by 3, I get y equals negative 2. So now I'm going to take those two pieces together, and I'm going to box them in. It always goes in alphabetical order. Doesn't matter which one you solved first. So if I were to kind of step back and look at these two solving methods, first of all, when I do substitution, I'm going to use that anytime I have a variable by itself. So if I have a y equals or an x equals, I'm going to then substitute into the other equation. In elimination, I don't have a variable by itself, so I have to eliminate. So if you kind of look, the, it's interesting. The substitution takes a little bit more work at the beginning, but then the second half of it's really quick. And then uh, elimination, the first half of it's pretty quick. We find that x value right away. And then when we plug it back in, it takes a little bit more work to find the y value. All right, so I'm going to encourage you to pause here and try to do examples three and four on your own. All right, let's see how you did. This is another substitution because I have... Um, I have a variable by itself, so x equals. So I'm going to take this stuff that x equals, and I'm going to put it into x in the other equation. So that's going to make my equation look like negative 2, and then we said x was 2y plus 3 plus 4y equals 1. Our goal is to get one equation with one kind of variable. We have all y's here, so life is good. Kill the parentheses. Oh, interesting. I've got multiple y's on the same side. I put them together. Minus 4y plus 4y cancels out, and we're left with negative 6 equals 1. Now, this happens once in a while, where all the variables cancel out, and there's two things that can happen. You could have... Either everything works or nothing works. And you decide that based on, did you get a statement at the end that's true or false? This statement is false. Negative 6 does not equal 1. That means that this system has no solutions. In other words, if you graph this line and you graph this line, they would intersect never. They would intersect never.
All right, let's have you try the next one. So this is an elimination. So I'm going to multiply by and multiply by. It uh, doesn't look like either one of them is better to get rid of. So let's get rid of the x's. So I'm going to turn the 2 into a 4, but I need it to be opposite. So I'm going to times this by negative 2. So that would make negative 4x. Dang it, I wanted to change colors. Negative 4x plus 2y equals negative 2. Notice I times it by everybody. The second equation, I've cut, because I want the negative 4x to cancel with the positive 4x, I'm not going to multiply this by anything. I mean, technically, I'm timesing it by 1. If it helps you understand it better, we're timesing that by 1. Now I have my x's set up to cancel, so I can add that 0. I can add that 0 equals 0. So this is the alternate side of this coin. Does 0 equal 0? Dang it, that should have been in red. Does 0 equal 0? Yes. This is a true statement. Because this is a true statement, that means that there are not all solutions, but infinite solutions. If you write all solutions, I'm not going to give you full credit because all solutions means that every single combination of numbers works, and that's false. That's not true. Every combination, let's take x to be 0 and y to be 0. 0, 0 does not equal 1 when you plug 0, 0 into this. It just means that there are infinitely many solutions that are the same. So how do you find two lines that have infinitely many solutions that are the same? Well, what has to be true about those lines? They have to be the same line. So in this case, when you have no solutions, that means that you have parallel lines. If your lines never intersect, that means they must be parallel. If you have infinite solutions, those two lines have to touch at every single point. The only way for that to happen is for them to be the exact same line. So the rest of the next two examples are just kind of how to handle when you've got messy fractions in there. Um, my advice is to just kill off the fractions right off the bat. So get rid of the pieces that you don't want. So like, for instance, in this equation, I don't like that I've got the divide by 3, a divide by 2, and a divide by 2. So I'm going to pick one thing. Then I'm going to multiply this whole equation by that would kill off a divide by 3 and a divide by 2 and a divide by 2. Now, if you struggle with finding the number that works, you can always just take these numbers and multiply them together and multiply by that. So 3 times 2 is 6 times 2 is 12. If you times by 12, that'll work. I'm going to find the least common multiple. So what's the least common multiple of 3 and 2 and 2? That would be 6. So I'm going to times this equation by 6. So that would leave us with, okay, so when you times a fraction by a number, you can do the multiply first or you can do the divide first. Multiply sometimes causes you to, it's a little bit tougher, like 6 times 8 is 48. 48 divided by 3, that's not so easy to figure out. But if you divide first, it's a lot easier. 6 divided by 3 is 2, so then 2 times 8 is 16, and then that has an x. Same thing here. Now this one you could probably times and then divide. But 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Why? 6 divided by 2 is 3. So then 3 times 5 is 15. Okay, what do we think about the second equation? So I don't have to kill any fractions, but let's set this up so that one of our variables cancels out. Uh, let's go for the x, I guess. That seems like that would be pretty easy to do. I should times this. I want this to be the opposite of 16, so I'm going to times by negative 8. So 2 times negative 8 is negative 16x. Negative 1 times positive, negative 8 is positive 8. And then that's negative 24. So we have our x's ready to cancel, so I can add these up. Negative 9 plus 8 is negative 1y. 15 take away 24 is negative 9. Divide both sides by a negative, and I get y equals 9.
as always, once you get one of your variables, you've got to plug and chug to find the other one. Now, you could plug it in anywhere you want. I always try to find the easiest, most simple equation. So this one, even though we messed with it, you can still go back to the original. So the original would be 2x minus, and then we said y was 9, equals 3. Bump over the 9, we get 2x equals 12. Divide by the 2, we get x equals 6. So now let's take those two solutions. Remember, it doesn't matter which one you solved for first. It matters which one comes first alphabetically. What do you think? All right. Similar problem here. We've got some fractions. How we take care of these is a little bit more complicated because... The variable and a constant is getting divided by some denominator. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to take the whole equation, and I'm going to times it by a number that's divisible by 4 and 6. Now let's say this time 12 is the better choice because 12 is the least common multiple of 4 and 6. But I'm going to show you that it doesn't matter. As long as you can find any multiple of 4 and 6, things will still work out. So I'm going to choose the multiple 24. 4 times 6 is 24. So remember up here how we divided first? I'm going to do the same thing here. 24 gets distributed to this. So I can do the 24 divided by the 4. That leaves behind a 6, but that 6, but that six still needs to get multiplied by the x plus 11. Then I'm going to do the 24, it gets divided by the 6, that leaves behind a 4, but that 4 still needs to get multiplied by the y plus 6. And then most of the people who make a mistake forget this. They actually do a good job here. They forget to multiply the 24 times the 3, and they just leave it as a 3. 24 times 3 is 72. Now, life is not perfect here because we have one equation with two variables still, but I would much rather have an equation with parentheses than one with fractions because I can handle this pretty well doing distri distribution. So 6 times x is 6x plus 66. Distribute the 4 would be 4y plus 24 equals 72. And now I want to get this in standard form, so who's in the wrong spot? The 66 has got a bump over and the 24 has got a bump over. So I'm going to write 6x plus 4y equals 72. Take away 24 is 36. Take away 66. No, 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 no. I'll just do it on my calc. 72, take away 24, take away 66, negative 18. Now I can take my other equation. Because this is in standard form, and this is in standard form, I'm going to have to eliminate. So let's eliminate x, I guess. That's the easiest one. What could I times by? That would turn 1 into the opposite of 6. I'm going to times by negative 6. So that would be negative 6x. Subtract 36y equals, boy, negative 282. Now I got my x's set up to cancel so I can add these two equations together. I would get negative, whoa, 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 whoa. 9 times 6 is not 36. Sorry, friends, that is 54. So 4 take away 54 is negative 50. Negative 18 subtract 282 is negative 300. Divide by negative 50, we get y equals 6. Now we've got to back substitute that in somewhere. I'm going to choose to put it into this one. So I get x plus 9 times 6 equals 47. 9 times 6 is 54. I got it right this time. Subtract by the 54, we get x equals negative 7. So now I can take these two solutions together to make my one solution. 
These two lines intersect at negative 7, 6. All right, so this is all about solving systems that are linear. They're either going to be in uh, standard form with a slope-intercept form or two standard forms. Maybe you'll have some fractions along the way that you got to clear out. Maybe you'll get some weird results like no solutions or infinite solutions. So let's look at, because this is pre-calc, I wanted to make sure that we did something that's relatively different than what you did back in Algebra 2. So we're going to add systems of quadratics. So I've got x squareds and y squareds. These are actually conic sections. We haven't got into conics yet. That'll be in unit eight. Um, but it's basically like circles and parabolas and hyperbolas and how many times they hit each other. All right. So we're either going to shoot for um, substitution or elimination. So as we look at this one, is there anything that we can substitute as a variable by itself or is it really easy to get a variable by itself? Uh, you could kind of argue that this is relatively easy to get y by itself if you wanted to go that route. You could try to get y by itself, but that divide by 9 that you're going to have to do eventually is not so good. But if you look at your x's, I've got 5x squared, 5x squared, 20x, and 20x. I don't really care about the numbers or anything else. I just care that I could eliminate all of my x values. So I'm going to go that route. I'm going to take this equation. I'm going to multiply it by negative 1. So that would be negative 5x squared. Then I'm going to put this underneath its like term. So negative 20x, negative 9y, and then plus 7 equals 0. Now this is something that I can add up. 5x squared minus x squared, 5x squared is 0. The 10y squared doesn't have anybody to add with. 20x take away 20x is 0. Subtract y, subtract 9y, is subtract 10y. Subtract 67 plus 7 is subtract 60 equals 0. Now I have something that I can work with. I have one equation with one variable. First thing I'm going to notice is that I've got a y and a y squared in the same equation, which means I need to factor. So if I want to try to factor, I can do 10 times negative 60 or... I can remember that if you have anything that belongs to every term, you can factor it out. So in other words, I'm going to divide every piece by 10 because 10 goes into every one of these. So I would get y squared, subtract y, subtract 6 equals 0. And now I have something really easy to factor. y subtract 3, y plus 2 equals 0. ZPP, y equals 3, y equals negative 2. So, we got two solutions here for our y values. Now, remember, once you get a y value, you got to plug it back in and try to figure out the x value. So, I'm going to take one of these y values, I'm going to plug it back in somewhere in my equation. Uh, to me, this one is the obvious choice. That's pretty easy to plug back into. So, we'll call that the situation where y equals negative 3. How about positive 3? Y equals positive 3. So now I'm going to replace all the Y's with a positive 3. So I'd have 5X squared plus 20X plus 9 times, and we said Y was positive 3. Subtract 7 equals 0. Combine like terms, 5X squared plus 20X. That's 27. Take away 7 is 20. I'm going to have to factor, but let's see if we can factor out first. It looks to me like everything has a 5, so I can just divide because this is 0. I'm just going to divide both sides by 5. So that's x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. This factors into x plus 2, x plus 2 equals 0. And I don't need to ZPP it twice because it's going to give me a, a solution twice, but I do have to at least write it down once. So when y is 3, x is negative 2. So negative 2, comma, 3 is one of my solutions. Let's go find the other solution. So now the other solution is going to occur when y equals negative 2. 
So we would have 5x squared plus 20x plus 9 times negative 2. Subtract 7 equals 0. Combine like terms, 5x squared plus 20x. That's minus 18 minus 7 is minus 25. Can we factor out again? Yes, we are killing it with the factor out here. I can divide everything by 5. x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. And then I can factor x plus 5, x minus 1. ZPP, x equals negative 5, and x equals positive 1. Now, those two x values correspond to this one y value, so I have to list them separately. So my other solution is negative 5, negative 2, and then positive 1, negative 2. So this system of conics, which you don't really know what those are yet, but the system of conics intersects at three different spots. Now, this was an example where we could eliminate, and I'm going to give you guys, I mean, it's going to be pretty straightforward. You're either going to eliminate or you're going to be able to substitute. Because this doesn't eliminate, like this has an x squared, this doesn't, so that wouldn't cancel. It also has a y squared, this doesn't, so that wouldn't work either. We have to use um, substitution here. So I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to rearrange it so that y is by itself. Or, x, oh no, x is already by itself. Why did I, oh no, no. Yeah, 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 it is, what the heck. Okay, so x is already by itself. So I'm going to take what x is equal to, and I'm going to substitute it in for x. Now, the problem is there are two x's, so you got to make sure that you put it in for both of them. So we would have 6 times the quantity y subtract 4 squared plus 4y squared plus 24 we said x was y minus 4. Subtract 3y plus 5 equals 0. How many equations do we have? 1. How many variables do we have? 1. That life is good when we do that. All right, so now we have to clean this thing up. So that means we have to start off by expanding y minus 4 squared. So remember, that's not y squared minus 16. I wish it were, I wish it were, but it's not. So over here y minus 4 squared means y minus 4 and y minus 4, which then distributes to be y squared minus 4y minus 4y plus 16, which combines to be y squared subtract 6, nope, y squared subtract 8y plus 16. Now, this is what we call margin work. So if you can't do this in your head, you go over to the margin of the paper and you do your calculation there. Then you bring your calculation back. So now this would say 6 times the quantity y squared subtract 8y plus 16 plus 4y squared plus 24 times y minus 4. Maybe I should have distributed that. I could have. I'm going to distribute all at once. So that's 6y squared, subtract 48y plus 16, plus 4y squared, plus 24y, minus 24 times 4, 96, subtract 3y plus 5 equals 0. I'm going to encourage you to pause at this spot and see if you can finish this on your own. At least finish this distribution. All right, so I would now try to combine like terms. So 6y squared and 4y squared is 10y squared. I need my calc to do this. Negative 48 plus 24 subtract 3. So that's negative 27. And then 16 minus 96 plus 5 is negative 75. Anything in common? Nope. This is only divisible by 3 and 9. Yeah, 3 and 9. 
and three doesn't go into 10, neither does nine. So this means this is some, oh, why did I write 75? Is that wrong? Oh, it's 16. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Six times 16, sorry gang, that's 96. That's 96, that was not very good on my part there. And this then ends up being 10y squared minus 27y plus 5. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's a lot nicer. So 5 goes into 10, but it doesn't go into 27, so game over. 5 is prime, and so 5 doesn't work, so there's nothing in common. So that means that I can then factor. Ten times five is fifty. Negative twenty-seven is twenty-five and two. I need them both to be negative. So all this goes back to our factoring days. Uh, Ten doesn't make a twenty-five or a two, so it's got to be a five and a two. The two would make the two negative. The five would make the twenty-five, but it's got to be negative. ZPP, oh, good night. Oh, no. These aren't X's. These are Y's. How many times have I fallen for that over the years? Many. These are Y's. So then I can now ZPP this. Y equals one-fifth, and Y equals five-halves. Ugh. Now i got to plug these back in. Oh, this won't be so bad, because remember, the equation we're plugging it into is not still quadratic. So... I'm going to get a different color here to highlight this. When y equals one-fifth, that means I'm taking this equation, I'm putting y in for it. So x equals one-fifth, subtract four. Common denominator, common denominator, common denominator. So four would turn into 20 over five. One take away 20 is negative 19, so x equals negative 19 over 5. So one of my solutions, and I'll go back and put that together in a second. Then the other one is going to occur when y equals when y equals 5 halves. So x would equal 5 halves, subtract 4. I'm just putting them back into this second equation. Common denom, that would turn this into 8 halves. So 5 take away 8 halves would be negative 3 halves. All right, time to put now this all together into two solutions. So when y is 1 fifth, x is negative 19 fifths. So I want to go negative 19 over 5, comma, 1 over 5. Remember, x is earlier in the alphabet than y. We always go alphabetical order. When y is 5 halves, x is negative 3 halves. So my other solution is negative 3 halves and 5 halves. Well, you're going to earn your money on these. It's pretty tough. Pretty tough. Good luck, though. Go after it. Get them. Go get them.